Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Cloudy But Fun Filled Afternoon of Organic Chemistry, Chem 170, with your host, me, Dr. White. Hi, everybody. Hope you all had a great weekend. I sure did. I went out and did a lot of yard work on Saturday, <laughs> mowed my lawn and other stuff. At my age, that's pretty good. I can still get out and mow my own lawn. And yesterday, I did a lot of housework, and plus I did some schoolwork too. All right, let's get going. Don't forget, keep on handing in your labs. And we're talking about ketones and aldehydes. And just to remind you, let me take the cap off my pen. It helps if it's off. This is an aldehyde. And this is a ketone. And remember, they have something in common which I think is one of the most important things in all of organic chemistry. That's this carbonyl group. As I mentioned before, you should know how to describe a carbonyl group by drawing it and in words, which is carbon or carbon atom. Double bonded to oxygen or oxygen atom. So you should know how to draw it and how to describe it with words. And notice both a ketone and an aldehyde have a carbonyl group in it. Now we already went through nomenclature and I ended up last week before we had lab talking about where you find ketones and aldehydes in nature. And if I remember correctly, I showed you the spice house and I showed you Dr. White loves vanilla, vanilla extract and the spice house has the best you'll ever find anywhere. All right, let's get to work. How do you make ketones and aldehydes, otherwise known as synthesis. Remember, synthesis is a fancy word meaning to make. And in case you forgot, my training and experience in industry has been mainly as a synthetic organic chemist, meaning making things, which I have. All right. Now, We've already gone through these reactions, the next two. So I'm going to go through it a little quicker than normal. And if you remember, if you take a primary alcohol, oxidize it, you'll get an aldehyde. So let's take a look at it. Remember, if you take a primary alcohol, which I'll abbreviate like this, and I'll never ask you what is a primary secondary tertiary alcohol. And this means you're oxidizing it. There are different oxidizing reagents, sodium dichromate, potassium dichromate, uh, potassium permanganate, but I'm not gonna ask you to memorize them. This one, you see a bracket, O closed bracket, which stands for the original oxidizing agent was oxygen. And you remove a hydrogen here and here, and you form an aldehyde. Now, since we've already done this, I'm going to let you try one. On your own. And there you go. Give the organic product or products sort of following three points each. You know something, I haven't written this in ages, so. Just 
There, now you know it's official. Don't forget to keep on handing in your labs. Uh, one person's done. And don't forget, give me a thumbs up when you're done. I think everybody's done. So let's get the word. When you look at an organic molecule, look for what's different. What's not a carbon-carbon single bond or carbon or hydrogen atom? Ooh, oxygen with a hydrogen, and we're oxidizing it. It's an alcohol. It's a primary alcohol. And you lose the hydrogen here. Hydrogen here, form a carbon oxygen double bond. And therefore, here is our R group. This carbon here is this carbon. Here's our hydroxyl. Do you break carbon carbon single bonds? No. So I have one, two, three, four cross plus two methyls. Here's my carbon here, which is this carbon, which becomes a carbonyl carbon, which is this carbon, which I will double bond to oxygen, world's longest double bond. Let me clean that up. That looks better. And now I know there are four bonds to carbon, so I can put in my hydrogens. And on test number two, I will have a couple of synthesis problems. I've got to write it. I think test number two is a week from this Wednesday. And we're right on track. So what would you oxidize? to make this molecule. Your turn. And when you're done, don't forget, give me a thumbs up. All right, I think everybody's done, so I better get to work. We look at what we're trying to make, what's different, what's not a carbon-carbon single bond, carbohydrate, ooh, oxygen, double bond to carbon with a hydrogen carbons on it, that's an aldehyde. And what do you oxidize? to make an aldehyde, a primary alcohol. This carbon is this carbon, primary alcohol. Therefore, if I look at this, the R group is attached to the carbonyl carbon. So my R group is this. So do you break carbon, carbon, single bonds? No, and this carbon, uh, becomes this carbon. So I'll have a CH2OH. And then there's four bonds to carbon. And I'll put in my hydrogens. And there you go. Remember, we've already done this.
that's why I'm not going to do a lot of uh, examples. All right. Now, if you oxidize the secondary alcohol, you make a ketone. Remember, secondary alcohol is two R groups on the carbon with the alcohol hydroxyl group. Remember, R and R prime are like X and Y, as this means there's carbon and hydrogens in them. They can be the same or different. And if you oxidize the secondary alcohol, use a hydrogen here and form a carbon carbon double bond, a ketone. Remember, this carbon becomes this carbon. Now, unlike an aldehyde, you can have acyclic ketones. They're not in a ring. And you can have cyclic ketones that are in a ring. As I warned you at the beginning of this chapter, Dr. White and Mother Nature love ketones and aldehydes. And we both love cyclic ketones. But first, Your turn. What would be the organic product or products for following reaction? I'm going to work you hard today. <laughs> Practice is good for your grade. And also I get what I want. You learn organic chemistry. And when you're done, give me a thumbs up. All right, I think everybody's done. So let's take a look at this. We look at this molecule, what's different? What's not carbon? What's not hydrogen? What's not a carbon-carbon single bond? Hyd oxygen with a hydrogen to a carbon. That's a alcohol. What type is it? It's a secondary alcohol. Now I can call one of these R and the other one R prime, doesn't matter which you call which. And when you oxidize it, which is what bracket O bracket means, you get a ketone. And remember, ketone is not spelled with a Y. So here's the hydrogen here. I lose that. Do you break carbon carbon single bonds? No. And this is one way of drawing the molecule. Remember, molecules are like my hand, they float in space, rotate. And this would be another way I've done is rotated. Or you could show the bond angles. And all those would be identical, acceptable on a test. Aren't you glad your instructor knows organic chemistry quite well? I am. All right, let's try another one. And here's another one for you to try. Give the organic product or products for the following reaction. Three points each.
Thank you, Joe. And you too, Calvin. And Tim. And Meg. We're all done. I better get to work. Is this organic chemistry hard? Not. <laughs> all right. Let's look at this molecule. What's different? Ooh, oxygen with a hydrogen and a carbon. And notice this carbon has carbons here and here that are bond together. This is a secondary alcohol. In the ring, it just so happens R and R prime are bond together. And if I oxidize it, I'll lose this hydrogen and this hydrogen. And between the oxygen, and this carbon, I'll form a carbon oxygen double bond. Now here's this carbon here. We have the whole ring, which is our R and R prime. Do you break carbon, carbon single bonds? No. So I'm gonna wind up with the ring. I'll still have the methyl group where it is. I'll still have the ethyl group where it is. And this carbon here, which is this carbon here, which is this carbon here, will now be double bond to oxygen. And that's how you do it. And like I said, there'll be at least three synthesis problems on test two. I can't put any more. Maybe I could do four, but no more than that, because that'd be cruel, unusual punishment. And I think it's still outlawed by the Supreme Court. Cruel, unusual punishment towards students on an organic chemistry test. What would be the starting material to oxidize to make that molecule? And remember what I'm showing you now, these general reactions and what we're practicing are the building blocks organic chemists like me use to make molecules you use in your daily life. All right, I think everybody's done, almost. Yep, everybody's done, so I better get to work. And what's different in this molecule? Ooh, oxygen, double bond to this carbon. With carbons here and here, let's say ketone. And what do you oxidize to make this? Whoop, I don't know. <laughs> My brain got ahead of myself. It happens sometimes. And what do you oxidize to make a ketone? A secondary alcohol. And the carbon with the carbonyl, carbon double bond to oxygen will be the carbon with the alcohol. Everything else is still attached. So I'll still have my ring. I'll still have my T-butyl group. And here's my carbon right here with the carbonyl. And that will be this carbon with the hydroxyl group. And that's how you do, oh, let's do one more. This is fun. There's one more for you to do.
Thank you, Joe. And Tam, Calvin. And Meg, we're all done. All right, let's take a look at this. What's different? Ooh, oxygen, double bond to carbon. What carbon's here and here? It's a ketone. This so happens R and R prime are the same, methyl. And what do you oxidize to make a ketone? A secondary alcohol. In this case, what's R and R prime? The same, methyl. So, the carbonyl carbon becomes this carbon right here of the alcohol. And this is the molecule you would start with. Does everybody see the significance of this specific reaction? Take a look at it. Do you see why it's important? Uh, time's up. This is the common name isopropyl alcohol. This, the common name, is acetone. Acetone is nail polish remover, one of the two molecules that's used for nail polish remover. Isopropyl alcohol, also nobody calls it by two propanone or two propanol. I have to think about it. And it's found in rubbing alcohol. Anywhere from 70 to 90 percent, where depending which type you buy. And the significance of this is if you're ever on a desert island. And you want to take the nail polish off your nails and you don't have any nail polish remover, but you have plenty of rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, you can oxidize it and you'll make acetone. Now you can take your nail polish off. By the way, that's a mental exercise I like to do every once in a while. If I were on a desert island or just alone, wherever, and I needed this and I didn't have it, how would I make it? with what I do have. It's a, a really fun mental exercise. Speaking about mental exercises, first of all, public service announcement from me, Dr. White. Did you happen to drive by a gas station and think about the fact that the gas in North, gasoline in Northern Illinois, and I don't know about the rest of the country, but I think so, you'll see placards on the pump saying this gasoline contains up to 10% ethanol and ethanol is an alcohol. Do you happen to, and if you're underage, you shouldn't, but you can still look at the bottles. Do you happen to go into a supermarket or a liquor store, pick up some hard spirits, you know, the good stuff, vodka. Oh, do you know today's National Vodka Day? Yay, I think I'll have a drink later, but anyways, did you know hard spirits, beer and wine contain ethanol and alcohol? Or as I just pointed out, did you happen to think about rubbing alcohol? You know, stuff, I guess that's why they call it that, to disinfect your skin or whatever, has isopropyl alcohol and alcohol. And finally, as I just mentioned, did you happen to pick up a bottle of, I don't have one right here, this is water or not, nail polish remover and look at the label and see it has acetone, which is a ketone. You should remember, think about organic chemistry when you're not in my class, it won't hurt. Remember organic chemistry is everywhere. I stole that from SpongeBob. But anyways, think about it. Now for a feel good moment from Dr. White. Think about six months ago. If I had said alcohol, if I had said double bond, if I had said methyl group, would you know what I'm talking about? Probably not. See how far you've come and how much you've learned? I hope you feel good about it. You should feel proud about that. Yay. Thank you, class.
All right. So if you take a primary alcohol, oxidize, you get an aldehyde. Secondary alcohol, you oxidize, you get a ketone. Now let's look at a very exciting uh, way of making a specific type of ketone. And that's Friedel Crafts acylation. Now, what's acylation? Now, I'll never ask on a test. An R group with a carbonyl bonded to something with carbons is called an acyl group. And Friedel Crafts acylation, some the same people, two chemists who came up with Friedel Crafts alkylation. This is a way of putting an acyl group on a benzene ring. If you take benzene, and this is called an acid chloride. And unfortunately, it's the only time. I'll have a chance to really talk about chemistry of acid chlorides. They're quite exciting. I've worked with them in grad school, but other things I'd rather spend time on with you. But this is an important reaction. You take a benzene ring with an acid chloride with aluminum trichloride catalyst, you'll make an aromatic Everybody see this okay or okay? Aromatic ketone, where is in the ketone, one of the R groups is a benzene ring. And this is a very special reaction. Why? Because you're making that rare thing called a carbon carbon single bond. And I'll explain later why it's important to make aromatic ketones. So let's take a look at this again. And remember when you're writing benzene, put a circle or the three double bonds. You have benzene, acid chloride, aluminum trichloride catalyst. And you make an aromatic ketone. And let me do this one, and you know I'm going to share the fun. Now, what's different? Oh, a benzene ring. What's different here? Oh, carbonyl with a chlorine and a carbons and acid chloride. And we have this catalyst here, aluminum trichloride. And what you make is an aromatic ketone. Don't forget the bonds are circle in the benzene ring, carbonyl, and my R group. This makes HCl, which is neutralized. That's inorganic stuff. We're not gonna worry about that in this reaction. So what's my R group? Ethyl. I have a benzene ring, carbonyl, carbon, not wanting to be drawn. Let's try that again. Carbonyl, carbon double bond to oxygen. What's my R group? Two carbons. Because you know you don't break carbon, carbon single bonds. And notice we've made a carbon, carbon single bond. We've made an aromatic ketone. Remember ketone? carbonyl with two R groups, which is what we just did. And 
And there's one for you to try. Give the organic product or products three points each. And when you're done, don't forget, you know, to signal that tell me you're done. I think everybody's done. Is everybody done? All right, let's get to work. What's different? Ooh, a benzene ring. Remember, what's well, not carbon or hydrogen or carbon carbon single bond should get your attention. Ooh, carbons attached to a carbonyl with a chlorine acid chloride. I'll never ask that on a test, but I'll use the terminology. They actually have IUPAC names for that, but I'm not going to even go into that. And we have a catalyst here aluminum trichloride, and you make an aromatic ketone. What's my R group, isopropyl? And that's what you get that aromatic ketone. Oh, let's do another one. I'm having a good time. I hope you are. Here you go. Please give the organic product or products for the following. Three points each. Well, I think everybody almost is done. And everybody's done. Let's get to work. What's different? Ooh, benzene ring. Benzene ring, but that's not going to react with another benzene ring, but it's on a carbonyl with a chlorine, too, on that carbonyl. That's an acid chloride. Where this is an R group. And I have aluminum trichloride. K 
catalyst. And I'm going to have Friedel Crafts alkylation. Hold on. Nope, it's not the Secretary General of the UN or the President of the United States. One or two more rings. Stop. Thank you. All right, you get a aromatic ketone, and in this case, benzene ring, carbonyl. What's my R group? Another benzene ring. Now, this molecule has a name, common name. I don't even know if that's also the IUPAC. It's called benzophenone, which is this molecule right here. And one of the things you should be doing more and more is asking the question, why am I learning this stuff? And the obvious answer is you want to get a good grade in this class, so you're going to need to learn this for the test. But really, why learn this? Let's talk about benzophenone and aromatic ketones. Aromatic ketones is in a ketone. When aromatic, one of the R groups, R, R prime, is aromatic. Now, first of all, remember this has a pi bond, and these have pi bonds, and these are all conjugated together. Double bond, single, double, single, double, and so on. And that has unique properties. What unique properties? Well, aromatic ketones can absorb certain types of energy. We call it UV light, ultraviolet light. Now, where's one of the uses for, used to be for benzophenone, I'll talk about it, or aromatic ketones, and that is as a sunscreen. If you put a sunscreen on your skin this summer so you don't get the harmful UV rays from the sun penetrating your skin, causing nasty things like skin cancer, melanoma. Uh, my brother-in-law had very sensitive skin. And he had to really put a lot of sunblock on or wear a long sleeve in the summer. Otherwise, was, he would get, uh, what would you call it, benign, uh, whatever, he could get skin cancer. Luckily, he didn't, but his son had problems with that too, my nephew. But anyways, benzophenone for many, many years was the active ingredient in sunscreen. It absorbs the UV radiation so it doesn't get to your skin and damage it. Now, a number of years ago, EU found that there was this tiny, tiny little bit that benzophenone might be a carcinogen. And they went and banned it, and the FDA said, well, if they do it, we should do it. And the manufacturers of sunscreen said, all right. And they took one of the benzene rings, popped the methyl or ethyl group on it. Oh, this is a new compound. And it turned out, instead of being that much of a carcinogen, it was almost non-existent. But really, in my book, it's the same molecule. But what am I to know? I don't know uh, the chemistry behind carcinogens in your skin. But anyways, another important use is absorbing UV radiation, and it's called photochemistry. Photochemistry is by shining light. Usually, it's UV light. It helps make reactions go quickly, certain types. And there's a whole area of organic chemistry called photo organic chemistry or this photochemistry. And I could teach a probably two semester or uh, graduate level photochemistry course just on photochemistry. But two areas of photochemistry you might be interested in, newspapers and other places that do high speed printing, the ink they use to make it cure quickly on the paper when it's being printed super fast, 
they use photochemistry and they have UV lights. And to initiate that as a catalyst, you use aromatic ketones. Now, how many of you are familiar with the nail polish that's been out a couple of years ago? And you notice I don't polish my nail. Hmm, I don't think I'll be a nail, uh, do any nail commercials or be a hand model on TV, but they, you put it on and then you put it under a light and it hardens or cures as we call it. By the way, nail polish is serious, serious high level organic chemistry. It is. It's an area I have worked in, but it is. Well, what they have in there is an aromatic ketone that catalyzes the curing, the reaction to make your nail polish become a polymer. I'll teach you more about polymers and harden and well, I'm hitting it on a surface your nail polish is nice and tough and durable. And that's because of photochemistry with aromatic ketones. So next time, why am I learning this? Well, there's usually a good reason in the real world. Aren't you glad I worked in the real world and know it? Oh, I am. All right, let's move on. Now, when we talk about reactions of ketones and aldehydes, let's talk about the carbonyl group. Now, one thing I should point out, and I'm going to go to my whiteboard, have more room. A convention I will be using, since a lot of the reactions are the same for ketones and aldehydes. When R prime equals H, this is an aldehyde. When R prime is carbons, this is a ketone. And this is a shorthand for showing aldehydes and ketones at the same time. Our double prime will always have carbons. For most part, there's one exception for aldehyde, but our prime, if it's a hydrogen, that's why we put it in a bracket, it's an aldehyde. And if it's carbons, it's a ketone. All right, let's look at the carbonyl carbon. By the way, I think I might've told you that somebody came up to me and said, Dr. White, what kind of organic chemist are you? If I were being truly honest, my heart of hearts, I'd say I'm a carbonyl synthetic organic chemist. Because most of the work I've done in organic chemistry have dealt with carbonyl groups. I love them. All right. Now, carbonyl group has one pi bond and one sigma bond, double bond. But let's look at something special about the carbonyl group. Oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. Electronegative is the ability to be strong enough to hold the electrons we're sharing closer to one atom over the other. And because of that difference between carbon and oxygen, I'll never ask this on a test, but it's important for you to know, carbon is slightly positive and oxygen is slightly negative. This is the lowercase delta. which is a lower one of the Greek letters. By the way, this is capitalized delta. And organic chemistry de delta in math too is difference. And lowercase means small difference. I'll never ask this on a test. So this means a small or slight negative charge and a small or slight positive charge on the carbonyl carbon, carbon double bonded oxygen. 
that has a profound, profound effect on the chemistry of carbonyl groups and ketones and allies, and also other molecules we'll talk about are functional groups. So oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. Again, switches off. The carbonyl carbon is polarized. I showed you that. And nucleophilic attack occurs. Remember, organic chemists are violent. Instead of saying bonding, we say attack. And actually, you're at a symposium. Other organic chemists would use that type of terminology. Attack occurs at the carbonyl carbon. Now, what's nucleophilic attack? Well, philic comes from the Greek word phile, which means lover. So it loves, and nucleo is like the nucleus of plus charge. So nucleophilic attack, something that loves plus charges, where is going to attack on a ketone or aldehyde? I'm not going to write into that. right here. And a lot of the chemistry happens. Not all of it, but a lot. And the switch is off for this slide. But this shows you, the arrow shows you how the electrons, if I had an actual nucleophile that had a negative charge, it would attack this and open up the bond to something like this. Again, this will never be on a test, what you see on the screen. Another way of I could also have drawn it is if I have a nucleophile that's H plus NU minus, the NU will attack the carbonyl carbon. This opens up, and then this will make a hydroxyl group. And so where does that leave us? Almost time for a break. Now, before we take a break, there's something I have to tell you about. Everybody, take a deep breath. Let it out. Take a deep breath. Let it out. Are you all nice and relaxed? All right, the next four reactions are some of the more, how should I put this? challenging to student reactions, relax at first, when you first start learning this. But after a while, students get this. So if you're having a little difficulty at first, relax, you'll get it, but it's a little challenging. Now, these are quite important. And after the break, I'll tell you why they're important. What's time for a break? Let's take a five minute break, come back at 155, and we'll continue with ketones and aldehydes and their reactions.
Let's get going. Everybody back? Remember, there's only 27 more shopping days till Halloween. Oh, I just thought of something. When I teach face-to-face, -face, which we're not, if I have a class on Halloween, I bring candy. And if I don't have a class on Halloween, like our class would be after the day after, I think, I always bring in candy too. Now I do Halloween by my golden rule of candy for Halloween, what's that? If I don't give out candy that I wouldn't want myself, which means usually I'll either do Nestle Crunch or Kit Kats. Those are my favorite Halloween candies. M&Ms is all right, but Kit Kats and Nestle's Crunch are much better in my book. But alas, we're not face to face. I'll hold up a piece, a bar on the screen. Nah, that wouldn't be nice. All right, well, let's get back to ketones and aldehydes. And one of the things, uh, as I said, the next four reactions are a little challenging, but I think you're up to it. And because they are challenging, I will never on a test or in a final put the next four reactions as synthesis problems. That's not fair. And you know, that's not the way I operate. All right, let's look at the first one. First one is formation or synthesis of what we call hemiacetal and hemiketals. And here, and I should have put an H there too. I have it written this way, but anyways, you take a ketone or aldehyde, if R prime is H, it's an aldehyde and now reacted with an alcohol with acid catalyst, you make when R prime is H, it's a hemiacetal, which I'll never ask on test, what is that? Yes, there's IUPAC nomenclature, which I won't be teaching you. And if R prime is alcohol or aryl ketone, it's a hemiketal. Now, why are these reactions important? Well, this and the next reaction, if they didn't happen, you wouldn't have any starches. Mother Nature uses these two reactions to make all the starches. In fact, this one to also make smaller or carbohydrates such as table sugar. And actually next one too. So if these reactions didn't exist, you would not have a lot of good things in life, like rice, bread, potatoes, or the better stuff, French fries, Lay's potato chips, the sour cream onion, you know, all the stuff I shouldn't have. All right, let's look at the first reaction. Remember, this is an aldehyde when R prime is H, it's a ketone when R prime is carbons plus an alcohol, an acid catalyst. That's what H plus is. Keep your eye on the carbonyl carbon. What's attached to it stays attached to it. Then you get a hydroxyl group. And this part here attacks what was the carbonyl carbon to become this one. And that's what you get. And when we go later on, talk about carbohydrates, we'll come back to this reaction. And remember, the carbon with the hydroxyl group is the carbon in R with the oxygen bonded to it. Again, the carbon in the alcohol with the oxygen hydroxyl group is the, oops, is the carbon here that the oxygen is bonded to. So let's take a look at the following. 
And now you have to identify not one, but two molecules, what's different. And here we have carbon double bond to oxygen and hydrogen carbons here, that's an aldehyde, but it could have also been a ketone. Here, I'll call this R prime, even though usually you call that for carbons. And this is R double prime. Ooh, carbon, carbon, car hydroxyl group, that's an alcohol. And I have an acid catalyst. And I'll call this R. And when you react it, keep your eye on the carbonyl carbon. What's attached to it stays attached. This opens up the hydroxyl group and the oxygen. And on the oxygen here, you have R. So Keep your eye on the carbonyl carbon. I'll do that. What's attached to it? Hydrogen, methyl, R, and R prime. Then I'll have my hydroxyl group. Then I'll have this oxygen. And what's my R group? Right here, three carbons. And notice the N carbon is bonded. Whoops to the hydroxyl group, which means it's bonded to that oxygen. And that's how you do it. Now, let me do one more, and then I'll have some examples for you. And let's look at the following example. What's different in the first molecule? Ooh, oxygen is double bonded as carbon, is carbon here and here. This is a cycloketone. But it could have been an aldehyde, but it's not. And the cycloketone, R prime and R double prime are bond together. Then if we look at the next molecule here, carbon, carbon, ooh hydroxyl group on a carbon, alcohol, and H plus is acid catalyst. And what I'll get is what's attached to the carbonyl carbon is still attached. And then you'll have a hydroxyl group and O and the carbons from the alcohol. Now, what's R? right there, ethyl. What's our prime and our double prime? The ring. So here's my carbonyl carbon, which is this carbon, which will become this carbon. Well, what's attached to that carbon? This right there is still attached. And it will have hydroxyl group, oxygen, and what's our ethyl? Now, if you put the hydroxyl group on this side and the ethyl with the oxygen on this side, that's okay. All you're doing is flipping the molecule 180 degrees. Remember, I'll never give a synthesis problem with this reaction. Your turn. What would be the organic product or products for the following reaction? Now, one of the bad things is on the board or on the screen in the classroom, you'd see the general reaction. Hopefully, you wrote it down. Remember, keep your eye on the carbonyl carbon. That's where the fun is.
Well, see a couple of people are done. If you're done early, please be patient. I try and give everybody time to finish. I think everybody's done. So let's do it. What do I have that's different? Ooh, carbon. Remember, different is not carbon, not hydrogen, or not a carbon, carbon, single bond. And right here, I have something different. And that's carbonyl with a hydrogen. It could be our prime, but in this case, hydrogen and carbons here. And I'll call this our prime our double prime. It's an aldehyde, but it could have been a ketone. Carbon, oh, hydroxyl of oxygen, that's an alcohol. Acid catalyst, keep your eye on the carbonyl carbon. What was attached to it? Our prime or hydrogen. And our double prime is still there. It opens up to a hydroxyl group, O, R, and think of it, remember what I showed you? The H goes to the oxygen and the OR attacks the carbonyl carbon. And this is called the nucleophilic attack. Well, this is my R group. I'm gonna start with my carbonyl carbon, which becomes this carbon, R prime hydrogen, R double prime ethyl, Hydroxyl group, oxygen, what's R? It's methyl. And that's how you do it. Oh, we got to do one more. Everybody writing this down? And don't forget tonight from 5 to 6.15, I have my office hour. If you have any questions whatsoever, come on by. I'll help you out. All right, let's move on to one more. And here's one for you to try. Give the organic product or products for following reaction, three points each. Let's see if I can draw better hydrogen. I can. This one's a little more challenging, but let's see if you're up to it. Remember, you're just learning this. And when, don't forget, when you're done, give me the 
thumbs up. All right, everybody done? All right, let's get to work. And if we look at the first molecule, ooh, oxygen, double bond to carbon in a ring, this is a ketone. But it could have been an aldehyde. They have carbon, car ooh, hydroxyl group, oxygen's different with a hydrogen to carbon, that's an alcohol. And I have acid catalyst. And this is my R group. And the ring is R prime and R double prime. They're just connect together. And what happens? Keep your eye on the carbonyl carbon, because that's where the fun is. Truthfully, it is. I know I've been having fun with it for eons now. I don't know about eons, a long time. This opens up to an alcohol not an alcohol hydroxyl group, sorry. Oxygen, also that carbon, R. So here's my carbonyl carbon, which is this carbon, which becomes this carbon. What's attached to this carbon is still attached. It becomes as a hydroxyl group, oxygen, then what's my R? The carbon with the hydroxyl group this is a carbon. R is bond to this oxygen. In this case, it's the center carbon of the isopropyl group in isopropyl alcohol. Is that a pretty molecule or what? Now you know I'm an organic chemist. And that's how you do it. Any questions on this? All right, let's move on. Hold on. Every once in a while, this happens. Hey, Dr. White. Yes. Uh, would you mind going back real quick to the problem we just did? No, let's see if I can get back to that because for reasons I've never figured out. Here we go. All right. You got it? Yes, thank you. Would you like me to explain something or just wanted to count if you know something now? No, I just wanted to, I thought I missed something on there, but I... I just wanted to clarify, but I, I got it. That's perfectly correct. Fine to ask, and I always will go back. Thank you. Right. You're welcome. All right, I've got to close this down and open it again. Let's try one thing first. No, it's playing funky with me. I've never figured out why sometimes this happens. I know how to. Let me open everything again. All right, let's continue on. Now, if you notice, if you take an aldehyde or ketone reactor with an alcohol, an acid catalyst, you'll form a hemiacetal or hemiketal. Think of the word hemi as half. Like a, if you got a hemi in your car, well, you'll have a fast car. But anyways, let's move on. What happens instead of one molecule or mole of an alcohol, you use two. And it turns out the hemiacetal 
to my ketal further reacts to form an acetal or ketal. Here's my carbonyl carbon. And now, the, what was the carbonyl carbon now has two oxygens, and each oxygen has an R group from the alcohol. And this is the reaction that Mother Nature uses to make starches, which unfortunately Dr. White loves. You know, the good stuff, French fries, potato chips, rice, all those good things in life. So again, here, our prime can be hydrogen. And when it is, you're talking about an aldehyde, you make an acetal. And when it's our prime is carbons, you make a ketal. So let's have some fun with this. An important thing is we now have two alcohol molecules. You take an aldehyde or ketone, when our prime is hydrogen, it's an aldehyde. When our prime is carbon, it's a ketone. Keep your eye on the carbonyl carbon. What's attached to it? Our prime or hydrogen. And our double prime is still attached to it. Then you'll have two oxygens then my R group from the two alcohols. And when R prime is hydrogen, it's an acetal. When R prime is carbons, it's a ketal. I'll never ask that on a test. Again, this reaction, like the previous one, I'll never put a synthesis problem on there, on a test or a final. All right, let's take a look at this reaction. And the question is, what's different? And here I have a carbonyl with a hydrogen and carbons, and that is an aldehyde. But it could have been a ketone also. When our prime is hydrogen, it's an aldehyde. Then what am I reacting? Ooh, two of carbon, carbon, hydroxyl group, alcohol. And then acid catalyst. Keep your eye on the carbonyl carbon. What's attached to it, our prime, our hydrogen, our double prime is still attached. Then you have the two oxygens, because that's where you need the two alcohols. And each oxygen has the R group from the alcohol. So if we look up here, this is our prime. This is our double prime. You can reverse it, it doesn't matter. But I like to do it that way. And here's my R group. So I'm going to keep my eye on the carbonyl carbon, which becomes this carbon right here. And I'll draw that first. What was attached to it, our prime is still there, our double prime is still there, this carbon. I'll have two oxygens, and each one has the R group, which in this case is ethyl. And that's how you do it. I'll wait until everybody's done writing this down.
it's interesting. I appreciate you people turning on your webcam at the other school this semester. I have a class. Nobody wants to turn on their webcam. Yeah, that's life. All right. Let me give one for you to try. And there's one for you to try. Give the organic product or products or following reaction. Three points each. And don't forget, if you played a nice Powerball and you win, don't forget about Dr. White. Send a few million my way too. <laughs> I rarely play Powerball or those games. I've been debating, should I wait or wait until see if it rolls over again? I think you're more likely to get hit by lightning than win a Powerball, which I don't wish on anybody, including myself. But then people do win. And don't forget when you're done, give me the universal I'm done sign, thumbs up. Like I said, these are challenging reactions. All right, do you guys need more time? All right, let's do this. Let's take a look at this. What's different? What's not a carbon-carbon single bond or carbon hydrogen? And we have carbon double bond to oxygen carbonyl. And I have carbons here, our prime, and carbons here our double prime. Then if I look, ooh, plus two of something, that's unusual. Carbon hydroxyl group is an alcohol. And H plus is acid catalyst. And what happens? Well, keep your eye on the carbonyl carbon. That's where the fun is. What's attached to it, and this could be a hydrogen, in this case it's not. stays attached to that carbon. Because of the two, you'll have to that carbon two oxygens, and each oxygen has the R group. So if we go back up here, I'm gonna do my carbonyl carbon, which is no longer, but this carbon was attached to it, R prime, ethyl, and methyl, and then I'll have my two oxygens. And then on each one, my R group was our methyl. All right. Oh, let's do one more. Remember, I'll never do a synthesis, but I'll wait a second in case you're writing down or checking the answer. Ooh, I almost forgot something I forgot. I should have mentioned at the beginning of the uh, class today. Uh, 
this Wednesday. I was going to probably do it today, but I think it's better on Wednesday. This Wednesday, I will go through the ethers and epoxides problem set. I don't believe I've done it yet. No, I didn't. This Wednesday, I'll go through the ether and epoxides problem set. So I highly recommend you do them before I do. All right, let's take a look at another problem. And here's one more for you to try. Give the organic product or product for the following. I see a couple of people done. I think everybody's done. Let's get to work. What's different? Ooh, carbonyl. And it's got a hydrogen, but it could have been our prime, but it's not. And carbon's here. And it's an aldehyde. So here we have an aldehyde. Ooh, two. Two of what? Carbon, 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 hydroxyl group, alcohol. And when you react two together, keep your eye on the carbonyl carbon. What's attached to that carbon? Our primer H and our double prime are still attached. Remember the two here, two oxygens to that same carbon in each oxygen has the R group from the alcohol. So if I come up here, here's my R prime, R double prime, remember attached to the carbonyl carbon, this one right here, then carbon, 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 alcohol, that's my R. So this carbon right here, all right. Then what's attached to it, R prime or H, our double prime, in this case, H and methyl, then two oxygens. What's my R group? Three carbons. Notice the hydroxyl group is on the N carbon, so the oxygen's the N carbon. And there are four bonds to carbon. That's always your friend. And that's how you do it. And I'm gonna do one more and I'll do this one. For some reason, students have trouble doing this with rings. And don't forget the acid catalyst. I almost did. What's the organic product or products for the following? And I'll do this one. If we look at the first molecule, 
what's different? Ooh, oxygen. And it's double bond to carbon in the ring. It's a ketone. Cyclic ketone. Could have been aldehyde. It's not. In this case, our prime and our double prime are bond together in the ring. Ooh, two. Carbon, carbon hydroxyl group, alcohol, acid catalyst. Keep your eye on the carbonyl carbon. What's attached to it, our prime or H, or our double prime is still attached. Then you get an oxygen and another one because the two. And then on each oxygen is the R from the alcohol. So here's my carbonyl carbon. I'm going to write it over here where I have some more room. What's attached to it is still attached to it. And this carbon here, which is this carbon here, will have two oxygens. And what's my R group? Ethyl. And that's how you do it. All right, anybody have any questions so far? I'll give you time to write that down. Am I nice or am I nice? Don't answer that. And when you're ready to proceed, give me a thumbs up. All right, let's proceed. Now that you made these two, an acetal or ketal, in this case, or hemiacetal or ketal, let's look at the next reaction. That's reversing. And another way of You can call it acid hydration of a hemiacetal and hemiketal reaction. And before I go in, well, let's talk, look at the reaction first. If I have an acetal or hemiacetal or hemiketal, remember our prime is, you can be either H or carbons. I undo it. I get back the aldehyde or ketone plus the alcohol that I would have used to do that. And how do I do that? I react it with water and acid, H plus and water. So this reaction needs H plus and water. And I'm gonna go full screen me, but I'll come back. Oh wait, I see her copying it down. And give me a thumbs up when you're done copying this down. All right, I think everybody's copied it down. I'll come back and I'll rewrite it again. But I got an important question to ask. Where you are right now, where you're sitting right now, if you needed some acid and water, H2O and H plus, where would you find it right now, real quick? Anybody know? Lemon juice? That would be one place, but I mean real fast. In your stomach. In our stomachs, we have water. You see me drinking my water today. And you know how your doctor tells you, it reminds me, uh, you should have, I don't know how many cups of water a day, but I get my amount of water. Uh, a couple of years ago when I was real sick, I wasn't drinking enough and it affected me. And the doctor warned me about that because certain things like my sodium level got real high and affected my blood pressure. 
I was real sick. I mean, real sick. And in case you're wondering, I survived. But in your stomach, you have water and acid. I think one of the miracles of life to me personally is we all have cells in our body that make hydrochloric acid, HCl. And one of the reasons you have that is in your stomach, there are organic chemical reactions going on. And one of them is the next reaction. Yes, it's going on in your stomach. And this is one of the two reactions mother nature uses to help you break down your carbohydrates. So let's look at this on the whiteboard. Now, if we take a hemiastal, hemiketal, R prime can be hydrogen or carbons. And keep your eye on the carbon that has two oxygens. There's only two places in all of organic chemistry that I know where you have a carbon that's single bonded to two oxygens. This and the next reaction are the only ones. And they give the same products. And I'll explain that this afternoon. So this gives you back the ketone or aldehyde you would have used to make this compound right here, plus the alcohol you would have used to make this compound right there. And if we look at the following reaction, the question is, what's the organic product or products of the following? And you look at this molecule and say, what's different? What's not a carbon-carbon single bond, carbon or oxygen atoms? Oh, look at one, no, two oxygens to the same carbon. And that's rare. Well, not rare, but it's, well, this reaction is unique. And on this oxygen, I have carbons. And this oxygen, I have a hydroxyl group. And I also have carbons here and here. Oops. And this could have been a hydrogen, but it's not. And if you react this with water, and acid, this carbon becomes a carbonyl, what's attached to it, R prime or H, and our double prime are still attached, and you get the aldehyde or ketone, then on the oxygen, this R group becomes this alcohol, and you get the aldehyde or ketone, the alcohol you would have used to make that compound. So now we go back, and look at the carbon with the two oxygens, this one, it will be double bond to oxygen, carbonyl. Then what's our prime and our double prime? Both are methyls. And then what's our ethyl? And that's how you do it. Give everybody a chance to write this down. All right, I think everybody's got it written down. So I'm gonna let you try one.
And here's one for you to try. Enjoy. Aren't you glad I share the fun? Oh, by the way, you can give me dirty looks anytime you want. Well, I see one person done, possibly two. And then there was three. Relax, I give every, everybody's done. Now, we look at this molecule, what's different? Ooh, one, no, two oxygens to the same carbon. One has a hydrogen on it. Hydroxyl group, the other R, alkoxy it's called. And it's got a hydrogen right here. I call that R prime or hydrogen. And that same carbon, I've got carbons. And this is a hemiacetal or ketal. And when you react it with water and acid, keep your eye on the carbon with the two oxygens. That becomes a carbonyl carbon. What was attached to it, carbon wise or hydrogen, is still attached. And this R group becomes this alcohol. So you get back the aldehyde or ketone plus the alcohol you would have used to make that molecule. And if we come up here, I'll call this R prime. This is our double prime. Remember, we're looking at this carbon with the two oxygens. And on this oxygen, this carbon, I'll call R. So I'll write this carbonyl carbon. What's attached to it? H is R prime. Ethyl, R double prime. Plus, what's my R group? Methyl. And that's how you do it. All right, again, with this reaction, I will never, ever, ever, I'll do another ever, give a synthesis problem. That's not fair, that's not kind. And you know that's not Dr. White or me, which are the same person. And if I look at the clock, I'm gonna give you an extra 60 seconds in our break Come back at 2.50, and I'm going to go take a break. Let's take a break. You, I've worked you hard today. I'll see you in five minutes.
oh no, I'm a whole 60 seconds late. I'm sorry. All right, before we continue on, have you ever thought about it? You're a walking organic chemistry plant. Throughout your whole body, organic reactions are going on to do things that keep you alive. Now, I should warn you, the last time I took biology was freshman year of high school. Not that there's anything wrong with biology, but by then I knew I wanted to become a chemist. Yes, I did that young. And I'd already been blowing up things, oops, <laughs> playing with chemicals when I was younger. And I knew that was my calling in life, and it was. But think about it, in your stomach, the reaction I just talked about is going on in the next one. If you had anything, say, for lunch or breakfast that had carbohydrates in it, and I think most of you have, that's being broken down by the reaction. The next one I'm going to talk about. Now, let's do one more of these. And there you go. I hope you've all been finding the videos I post useful for you. You can get some of your friends to watch, then I can really be a YouTube star. I'm just kidding. All right, I think everybody's done, so I better get to work. Now, if we look at this molecule, what's different? What's not a carbon-carbon single bond or carbon or hydrogen atom? Ooh, two oxygens. Notice they're the same carbon. And what do we have? We have, I'm running out of room here. Give me a second. There we go. We have carbon hydroxyl group, OR, then R prime, or it could be hydrogen. In this case, it is R prime, and R double prime. This carbon is this carbon. If I react this with water, and this is a hemiastal or hemiketal, we get the aldehyde or ketone I would have used to make that hemiastal. Keep your eye on the carbon with two options. Comes the carbonyl carbon, which attached to it is still attached to it. And then on the oxygen, the R group becomes an alcohol. So if I come up here, this is R prime, R double prime, and R. Remember the carbon that this oxygen is attached to, an OR, is the same carbon that has the hydroxyl group, and that's important. So this carbon here becomes this carbon here, and what's it becomes a carbonyl. What's attached to it? R prime methyl, R double prime ethyl. And then the second 
molecule you get is an alcohol. In this case, what's our N propyl? Notice the N carbon is to oxygen, so that will have the hydroxyl group. And that's how you do this. Now, one of the most important, well, first of all, hold on, go back to that Dr. White. Is everybody through copying down whatever they wanted to copy down? I think so. Now, one of the important things you're now being asked to do is look at molecules and identify functional groups, both in nomenclature and in reactions like this one. So guess what time it is? It's time to play that fun game, circle and name the functional group two points each. And let's have fun right now playing that fun game And this is the fun game you should be playing now. I'm not asking you to name the molecule, the circle and name the functional group two points each. And there might be more than one functional group in a molecule. Then again, there might not. Again, it's time to play that fun game, circle and name the functional group or groups, two points each.
No, one person's done, two, three. And I'll give you a little more time. And everybody's done, so I better get to work. So let's look at A. What's different? What's not carbon? What's not hydrogen? Oh, an oxygen with carbons here and here. Now I'm going to write down the functional group. You don't have to, but that's an ether. Now, if you circle the whole molecule, that's okay. Let's look at B. What's different? What's not carbon? What's not, ooh, hydrogen with a hydrox group on a carbon? We have an alcohol. Next, let's look at C. What do we have that's, to, ooh, an oxygen, double bond to carbon with hydrogen carbons. That's an aldehyde. And let's move on to D. What's the, ooh, oxygen, double bond to carbon. Carbon's here, carbon's here. And that's a ketone. And finally, E. I think I threw everything in but the kitchen sink on E. Let's get to work. Ooh, oxygen here to carbon to carbon. That's an ether. Carbon, carbon, hydroxyl group. That's an alcohol. Over here, carbon, ooh, oxygen there. It's hard to see, but yes, that's an oxygen. With a carbon, double bond to carbon, carbonyl, hydrogen. And what do we have here? An aldehyde. And finally, this last one, carbon, double bond to oxygen, carbon's here, carbon's here. And that's a ketone. Remember, ketone is not spelled with a Y. Students like to do that, and I don't take off for spelling. And that's how you play that fun game circle and name the functional groups, two points each. I hope you all had fun doing that. And really, it's an important skill because if you can't identify a functional group, you can't name it. You can't identify a functional group, you're not gonna know how it reacts to make new molecules. So even though this is a fun game, this is a very important skill you should have. I hope you all enjoyed playing that. I did. All right. Now, we just said if I take acid and water, water, acid, react with a hemiacetal or hemiketal, I get back the aldehyde or ketone I would have used to make that hemiacetal or hemiketal, plus the alcohol I would have used to make that hemiacetal or hemiketal. And let's go to the next reaction. And that's reversing, or I could have also put acid hydrolysis. And I'll never ask of an acetal or ketal. And if we look at this, I have a carbon with two oxygens and each oxygen has an R group on it. 
and this R prime could be hydrogen. Now I have R double prime, acid water. And what's attached to the carbon with the two oxygens is now this carbon of either an aldehyde, R prime is H, aldehyde, or ketone. And the R groups give me my alcohol. Now, one thing, listen carefully. Notice I just put quotes around the two. You don't have to put the two there. Because what are the questions I ask for this one? Give the organic product or products for it. So do you need a two there? No, you don't because we don't balance chemical equations unless we have to. And the previous reaction in this one, both give the same products with the same starting materials. This the amount of alcohol you get is slightly different, or not or slightly, is different. But for just looking at the product or products, you don't have to balance it. Quick story, do I have time? I do. A couple of years ago, I was teaching the same course also at College of DuPage, and I had these two twins. Do you have three twins? I guess you can. <laughs> Ways I had these twins, sisters, and they got really bent out of shape. I mean, really upset if I didn't put a two up there like in the reaction. So you'll see me, I've changed my slides for them because the last thing I needed was upset twins in my class. I mean, they really got ballistically mad. And I told them, calm down, calm down. But still, and I figure I'll just put a two up there. So if you see some of my slides from here on out where I balance things, you don't have to. But I still remember them. Luckily, their personalities were different enough. They were identical twins. And one of them had a streak of blonde here. With that, I could tell who they who was who. But both of them would get real mad if I didn't balance equations. I told them organic chemists don't. They still got real mad. All right, let's take a look at this reaction. First of all, the general reaction acetal or ketal. Reacting with water and acid. And this is how your stomach breaks down starches. This is the first step after you chew it, by the way. Oh, do I have time? I do. I don't know about you, but when I was about two or three, and I can still remember it, I used to wolf down food. They still use that terminology, wolf down food, when you eat it real fast and a lot. And my mother used to always say, chew your food before you sw swallow it or you'll choke. And guess what? I found out she wasn't lying to me because I did choke one time. Good news, I survived and I learned my lesson. But after you chew your food and you swallow it and it goes down in your stomach, you know, down here, there's acid and water, and that's if you had anything with starches in it, that's going on in your body right now, actually in your stomach. I think someone once corrected me, was it the large or small intestine too? Uh, I don't know, but down here it's going on. And what do you get back? Keep your eye on the carbon with the two oxygens. And that carbon was attached to it, R prime or H, plus R double prime. You get a ketone or aldehyde, plus you get the alcohol you would have used to make that right here. And for those who must, can I make it any smaller? You can put a two there, I wouldn't. 
and you get that alcohol or two molecules of it. If you look at this reaction, I'll let you write it down first. I'm going to do this one. Interesting enough, over the years I've been teaching, I've had four sets of twins two male sets, brothers, and two female, obviously, sister sets. And two of them have been in organic and two have been in general chemistry. Actually, I take that back. I've had five. Uh, four of them, I've had both of them in the same class at the same time, and one set, I had them one year apart. It was funny. They're both all the, all the uh, twins have been good. I'll wait until you're done. And I'll tell you the funny story. It happened in Chem 170. When you're done, give me a thumbs up. I know a couple of you already have. All right, I think everybody's done. Let's take a look at this molecule. What's different? Ooh, oxygen, oxygen. Remember when I say, what's different this time of semester? You look at a molecule and say, what's well, not carbon? What's well, not hydrogen atom? And I have two oxygens to the same carbon, and they're single bonded. That's rare. I only know of this reaction and the previous one. And they both give the same products. And each oxygen has carbons on it. And this carbon with two oxygens has carbons here. But it could have been a hydrogen and carbons here. If I come back up here, well, I can do it later. And if you react acid and water, water, acid, what do you get? The carbon with the two oxygens is double bond to a carbon, carbonyl. What's attached to it, our primer H and our double prime is still attached to it. And then right here, these R groups are on this alcohol. Now you can write it like this, or if you want, you can put it two in front. I put the quotes there so you know you don't really need it for my test. So let's go up here. And what's our prime? What's our double prime? Remember what's attached to the carbon? with the two oxygens, then what's on the oxygen is R. And notice in this case, they're the same. So what's attached to the carbon, this carbon becomes this carbon. And what's R prime? Ethyl, what's R double prime? methyl, and then I'll have my alcohol, and what's our ethyl? So you get this. For those who must, you can have a two there. Oh, let's do another one. First of all, I'll let you write it down. Once you've copied it down, give me a thumbs up if you're copying it down. 
All right, I think everybody's done. But before I do this, I was telling you about twins. I think it happened about a year and a half, two years ago. I was teaching Chem 170 face to face. It was the afternoon, just like this. And it was the first day of class. I see this one student, she looks familiar. And I said, all right. And the name didn't sound familiar for first name. So next class, I'm looking at her again. She looks, I, I've seen her before. So I asked, can I talk to you after class? And she says, all right, I've got some time. And she, I say, have you taken organic chemistry with me before? You look familiar. So, oh no, last year you had my twin sister. And they were identical twins to the point they both wear the identical eyeglasses with the identical frames. And I said, thank you. Actually, they were, she brought her sister in one time and they were side by side, identical to the point where uh, they sent me the end of the semester, a picture of them standing by side by side. I still have them. And it's quite amazing how identical they are, two sisters. So actually I had five sets of twins. All right, let's do one more of these because practice is good for your grade. And there you go. Give the organic product or products three points each. I don't know if I mentioned it last week, but it was last Tuesday, or was it Thursday? It was one, one of those two days, I think it was Thursday, I got my flu shot. Uh, flu season's coming upon us, get your flu shot. I don't think you ever want to get a flu in a pandemic, because how do you know what that is? So get your flu shot. I'll be quite honest, about four years ago, I wasn't getting flu shots and I caught the flu. It got bad, uh, real bad, it became pneumonia. At one point I was in my doctor's office and this measured you know, the blood oxygen level. He said, I'm gonna try a treatment right now, inhalation treatment. If I can't get your blood oxygen level up, I'm calling an ambulance and sending you to the emergency room of the hospital. Thank goodness he got it up, but I was pretty sick. After that day, that season, I always get my flu shot. All right, let's do this. I think everybody's done. Is everybody done? Thank you. And we look at this molecule, what's different? Ooh, one, no two oxygens on the same carbon in the ring. And each uh, uh, oxygen has carbons. And here's this carbon, which is this carbon. And notice it's attached to the carbons of the ring, which I'll call R prime and R double prime. Now R prime could have been hydrogen, but it's not. But remember in a ring, R prime and R double prime are bond together. And we have, in this case, a ketale. And what do you get? You get back the, if you look at this carbon with two oxygens, becomes this carbon of a ketone or aldehyde. You get back the ketone or aldehyde plus the alcohol you would have used to make this acetal or ketal. Now, for those of you who must, you can put it two there, but you don't have to. So what's my R prime and R double prime is to ring. 
which carbon has the two oxygens becomes the carbonyl carbon right there. Then what's my R group? Is methyl. So I get this alcohol. Remember these four reactions, I'll never give you synthesis. Now, in my excitement to get to these two reactions, I forgot a special reaction that I need to go back and talk about. First of all, any questions on this? Now, I was lucky, and trust me, I thank God for it. I'm religious, but I do thank him. Thank you. <laughs> or not to be sexist, uh, I thank her. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that when I went to Michigan State, oh, I knew I wanted to go there, and I knew the group I wanted to get into research. I was so fortunate and blessed to have Dr. William Roosh as my PhD advisor meaning I worked in his research group in the areas he was interested in. Now, his PhD uh, advisor was a great organic chemist. Dr. Roosh was a very outstanding organic chemist, but a very great organic chemist. His advisor was Dr. Herbert Stork. And Stork was known for great work he did in ketones and aldehydes. What do you think I went in Dr. Roosh? That was his area he specialized in, which I wanted to do also in synthesis. And one of the things Herbert uh, uh, Stork came up with was how to protect aldehydes and ketones. What happens if you have two functional groups in a molecule and you react it with a reagent and they both will react? but you only want one to react. Well, that happens. And Dr. Stork came up with a way of protecting it. It's just like if you were going outside and it's raining and you don't want to get wet, say you're going to your car in a parking lot, either have an umbrella or a raincoat. And guess what? After the rain, you take it off or close your umbrella. Well, the same thing he came up with with a protecting group. So let's look at what did he do? Well, first of all, let's look at the general reaction. And you've already learned this. If you take two alcohols, acid catalyst reactor with a ketone or aldehyde, you get this compound, an acetal or ketal. Now, what Herbert uh, Stork came up with was if you take an aldehyde or ketone and react it now with ethylene glycol, and acid catalyst, what do you get? Let's look at ethylene glycol. What do we have in there? One hydroxyl group on a carbon. No, two hydroxyl groups on a carbon. This is really two alcohols. So in this case, what happens is the same thing. What's my R, my CH2? But do you break carbon carbon single bonds? No, that bond is still going to be there. For some reason, students like to break this bond or forget to put it there. That's why I made it real bold this now, so you don't. Don't, it's wrong. And one of the things is, when you put the first hydroxyl group reacts to make this, you now have what's called the intramolecular reaction. And intramolecular reactions are faster and high, higher yield. So this is 
quite good. Now this is a hemi, or it's a ketal or an acetal. And to get back, take it off, all you have to do is react it with acid water when you want to take it off. And it's quite effective. So let's have you try this because we've really already done the reaction. Your turn, give the organic product or products for the following reaction. Let's see, almost everybody done. I think everybody's done. I better get to work. So if we look at the whiteboard, what's different here? Ooh, carbonyl, R group, which R prime, which in this case is a hydrogen, other R group, double prime. I'll call this R prime, this R double prime. Now, if I look on this, Ooh, hydroxyl group on carbon, alcohol, a second one. So there's two hydroxyl groups on carbon, two alcohols. And keep your eye on the carbonyl carbon. What's attached to it are prime or hydrogen, are double prime, still there. Then oxygen, R, oxygen, R. Now, Here's my carbonyl, and I'm going to come up here to have more room. What's attached to it? Hydrogen, R prime, and our double prime methyl. Then I have my two oxygens. What's our CH2? CH2. But we still have this bond there that doesn't get broken. It's like that. And that's the intermediate, and that's Stork's great, one of his great discoveries, a way of protecting aldehydes and ketones, and then you can easily take it off. Remember, these four reactions, I will never, ever give synthesis problems. That's real cruel, unusual punishment. And remember this reaction, oh my gosh, I don't know what's going on. This is it to me again. Hang in there. I've got to talk to someone. If anybody knows a computer expert who knows. Well, let me close everything. I know how to bring it back. All right.
I don't know about you, but throughout my life, I've had heroes, people I really look up to have been, done heroic things. And in chemistry, one of the greatest of all chemists and organic chemists in my mind, who's a hero of mine, is the French organic chemist, Victor Grignard. All right, everybody see, let me make sure I got it. Yep, everybody see the entry from uh, Wikipedia for Victor Grignard? Don't you love that mustache? I wish I could grow one like that, but with wearing gas masks in the past, I never let mine get that big. But this was a great organic chemist. He won the Nobel Prize for part of what I'm gonna teach you. And if you notice, he died in 1935 uh, and won about 1910, I think he won his Nobel Prize for what's called the Grignard reagent and the Grignard reaction. And does it say when he got his Nobel Prize? And I suggest you go back and look at this and read about this one in 1912 and a great organic chemist. Well, what's the great discoveries he made? And the first one is making the Grignard reagent. And how do you make a Grignard reagent? This is a fun reaction to do in the lab. And I've used it in my research for my PhD research. If you take an alkyl halide, and I don't have here, but X can be chlorine, bromine, or iodine, and react it with magnesium metal, you form the Grignard reagent, RMGX. And that's the Grignard reaction. It's fun. I mean, really fun. And it's really useful. And let's take a look at this again. Now, important thing that students make mistake on test number two and the final is they'll do this and this is wrong. It even says it on the paper. There's no such thing that exists where you have a R group on a halogen and bond to the halogen is magnesium. No, it's an R group bond to the magnesium, which is then bond to the halogen. So let's take a look at one. and the carbon with the halogen is the carbon that the magnesium will be attached to, then the halogen is bonded to that. So if we look here, look for what's different, what's not carbon, what's not hydrogen, oh, chlorine on a carbon, alcohol halide plus magnesium. Remember X can be chlorine, bromine, or iodine. And what you get is the Grignard. Now, do you break carbon, carbon single bonds? No. So that's my R group for carbons. Which carbon had the halogen? 
this carbon will now be bonded to magnesium and bonded to magnesium, in this case, chlorine, and there are four bonds to carbon. This counts as one bond, MgCl. And that's how you do the Grignard reaction. Now in two semester organic, they actually make this and react it. In one semester, we don't have the time lab wise. There you go, have fun. And I think everybody's done. All right, let's take a look at this. What's different? Ooh, carbon with a halogen, alcohol halide. Remember, X can be chlorine, bromine, or iodine. Anybody having nightmares here when we say X can be? I hope not. And then, ooh, magnesium metal, that's unusual. And this is how you form the Grignard reagent. And what's my R group? And propyl. And which carbon has the magnesium? I mean, the, uh, has the halogen, the end one. And that will be bonded to magnesium. And then the bromine will be bonded to magnesium. And there's four bonds to carbon. And that's how you do it. And if I look at the clock, our time is just about done. Boy, time flies when you're having fun with ketones and allies. Now, we had a rough, a lot of work today. And remember a week from this Wednesday will be test number two. <clears throat> I would highly recommend you get on top of the practice problems on Wednesday. I'll be doing the uh, ethers and uh, epoxide problem set. And most likely, like really likely next Monday, I'll do the ketones and allies. And with that, I'm gonna let you out a whole 45 seconds early. Don't tell the Dean. Shh. With that, gang is on. Bye now. If you need help, come to my office hour tonight from five to 6.15 on Zoom, you only have to drive to ECC. Is that a deal or what? With that, gang is on. Bye now.